Hi, Emily Baker here, curator with the Art Gallery of St. Albert, part of the Arts and Heritage Foundation. Today, I am delighted to bring you a virtual tour of House Illuminates by Amy Lowen. The spectacular exhibition was on view at the Art Gallery of St. Albert's main gallery space uh, from September until November 2021. And I am delighted to be able to virtually walk you through the exhibition, take you through the ins and outs of the show, and hopefully bring you some of the meaning and intention that Lowen intended for every viewer to have with this exhibition, whether they could see it in person or not. So I'm just going to quickly share my screen and without any further ado, we will get started. So to launch things off, I would thought I would simulate your first viewing exhibition or viewing experience coming into our exhibition space. We exist across two floors, and so the main floor where you first enter is actually our rent home sales and gift shop areas. And then you proceed up the stairs to the main gallery space. One of the nice things about the Art Gallery St. Albert is we have an extensive rental and sales program, which Amy Lowen has been part of for several years. And so we're able to expand our view of her work to include a few of the pieces from that, um, from that retail area as well. And so that includes some of these circular woven text-based artworks that we will dive into further in the exhibition space. And so this is another one that's hanging at the top of the stairs. And as you can see, there's a lot of little hints as to what's going to come in the tour. So use of language and text, simple colors and simple shapes, as well as weaving. So to introduce you to House Illuminate, Amy Lowen is a cornerstone of the artistic community, not only in Edmonton, but throughout Canada. Her creative practice combines and expresses both Eastern and Western art making sensibilities and House Illuminate presents works that promote peace and well-being. These ideas have been at the core of Lowen's practice for over the past 20 years. At the center of the exhibition, as you can see here, is a large scale house structure. It's about 15 feet by 10 feet by 10 feet. And it's a sculptural installation that Lowen has titled House Inspiring Peace. Initially inspired by Lao Tzu, the ancient Chinese philosopher, Lowen wanted to create an artwork that could physically and artistically embody this messages of world peace. The quote reads, if there's to be peace in the world, there must be peace in the nations. If there's to be peace in the nations, there must be peace in the cities. If there's to be peace in the cities, there must be peace between neighbors. And if there's to be peace between neighbors, there must be peace in the home. If there's to be peace in the home, there must be peace in the heart. And so Amy Lowen wanted to create an artwork that would not only artistically embody the sentiment of the peace for the entire society, peace throughout culture, starting and fostering inside the heart and inside the home, but she wanted to make something that literally referenced or visually referenced this idea of home. And so she created a simple, it's not quite that simple, but it a visually it looks quite simple, a house structure, four walls, a roof, and a door, in her words, like a house a child would draw. And she wanted to draw this, use this simple house structure as a way of making it very universal, something that's recognizable by anyone and everyone who comes into the gallery, regardless of their age, their experience, their education, their cultural background. She wanted to create something that was comforting, calming, inspiring that meditation and contemplation and ideas of peace for herself. And so she wanted to create something that was uh, able to connect any viewer with an innate sense of compassion, with their positive intentions, and with a desire to bring peace into the world. And to deliver, and Amy Lowen has delivered a space, physical space that you can walk around or enter into that allows these ideas and these um, aspirations to manifest and to flourish. And so one of the beautiful parts of this exhibition is not only seeing all of the incredible work that's gone into creating the piece, which we will dive into in great detail, don't you worry. Um, but it's also being able to have a space that is quiet, that is designed to bring you into the center of your own being, and is designed to remind you of the peace that can be innate in our own hearts and minds. And so every element of this exhibition is not just there for you to view, but is there for the artwork to in turn impact you. It's almost like a two-way street where you're viewing and taking in all the visual details and all the different environments. But I'll go through uh, in more detail how the artworks are impacting you in turn, designed specifically to bring you to a place of peace, a place of contemplation. And so you can see the exhibition carries more than just the house. 
And so there's these beautiful watercolor paintings along the wall um, that are incredibly rich in their color and um, really gentle washes and multiple layers of watercolor paint that have been work. And beyond these watercolor pieces, there's also a large window installation that you can see uh, as the camera kind of pans over that is specific to our gallery space. And I'll give you the entire origin story of this work as well. But you'll start to see, as we're looking at these videos, some of the visual motifs that are going to come up over and over again. And some of these design elements that Lowen has embedded not only into the house, um, but into her paintings and into this window installation as well. And the very last element that we'll talk about in the exhibition is actually an interactive piece. And you'll come to learn how important these interactive elements are for Amy Lowen's entire artistic practice. Um, but it's something that she includes in all of her shows. So she writes directly on the wall, please post your intentions. What will you do to make this world a better place? And for Lowen, she's provided a lot of post-it notes and Sharpies and people of any age can take part in the exhibition um, and sort of designed to allow this piece to be a growing, living uh, public artwork that reflects the peaceful intentions of everyone who takes in the exhibition. And so this film uh, footage was shot near the beginning of the exhibition. I think it was just about a week after the show opened. And so the, you can be com confident in your view that a lot more has been added to that part. So before we dive into the artwork itself, let's get to know Amy Lowen, the artist. So she was born in Hong Kong um, and actually pursued her first career as an occupational therapist where she trained at the university. Uh, she trained and studied in Chicago in the 1970s. And she actually spent much of her, um, the, sort of the first half of her career as an occupational therapist um, and took up art making practice as part of this profession. And so she was constantly encouraging her clients to take up a creative pursuit that allowed them to express themselves where they can sort of just create and explore uh, and have an outlet, an artistic outlet in their lives. And not being someone who practices or who preaches without practicing, Amy Lowen also took up art making as her own artistic and creative outlet. She began to explore um, as a hobby artist, looking into different watercolor and painting techniques, exploring portraiture and landscaping, and taking lots and lots of different classes and workshops to explore tons of different medias and art outlets. At this time she was living in Edmonton and had been settled there for quite a while and she found that a lot of her art making, early art making and hobby practice was focused around more western and European art making traditions. So studying things like watercolor, oil painting, uh, portraiture, mostly European and North American aesthetics. Um, and when she decided to make a switch in her career in her mid 40s deciding to put occupational therapy aside for a little while and pursue art making professionally she went to the university of alberta to pursue a uh, university education in fine arts so she got her bachelor of fine arts degree in 1992 and a master of fine arts degree in 1995 and what she was particularly interested in pursuing during her masters was merging some of the art traditions techniques and aesthetics that she grew up with in hong kong with the skills and aesthetics she'd been learning about for the last several years. And she was really interested in creating a hybrid art practice, something that blended the tools and techniques that she was familiar and comfortable with in her art, hobby art practice um, with the tools and techniques that are more traditionally used within uh, Hong Kong and Asian art practices. Um, and so she began to explore different modes of creating during her master's degree. You can see in the image on the right that she's using calligraphy inks and rice, cu rice paper in her practice, which is going to play a really large part in a lot of the work we're going to talk about. Um, but you can see that she's also blending it with acrylic paints and washes and different approaches to watercolor, as we can see in the image on the left. And so a lot of this time in, spent in the studio during her master's was very much to explore and incorporate all of these different traditions into something that was uniquely her aesthetic and her brand. And so looking for something that captured all areas of her experience in a unique voice. And so what I want you to focus on now is that image of Amy painting on the left. Something she started doing during her master's degree was these very large scale drip paintings. And so you can see that she's taking a large wide brush and using a watered down acrylic to create these large washes of color across the rice paper, which then drip down across the surface of the paper. 
And so take note of the gentle transitions of color. Those will come up again when we talk about the watercolor pieces. But at this point, what she was interested in was those drip patterns that were being created. And so once she finished her, uh, her horizontal pieces, she'd actually take the paper off the wall, rotate it 90 degrees, and do another wash in the other direction, allowing the paint again to drip towards the floor. In this way, she was actually creating a weaving effect with the paint drips. And so she thought about it almost like weaving the paint itself. She was really entranced with this idea of blending the horizontal and the vertical and creating these weavings through drips. And at this time, she was also interested in starting to integrate language and text into her work. And so she was quite inspired by this weaving, this blending horizontal and vertical. And so she went back to look for Chinese characters that had a lot of horizontal, horizontal and vertical strokes to integrate into this painting practice. And she'd settled on the character for kindness. Um, as you can see in this painting, um, that she's got, it's got a lot of those really nice strong vertical and these beautiful horizontal strokes that kind of mirror that play of paint that she was working on during her masters. And so she said this is where the idea of weaving paper really started for her practice as it jumped from this idea of weaving paint into weaving paper together. And you can see that she also started to really work with this idea of text and this idea of language. And these are some of the kernels, the beginnings of her peace project, which is what she's mostly been focused on for the last 20 or 25 years. And so after the project Kindness, she wanted to expand this idea and start playing with weaving in a physical sense this way, weaving rice paper together, but also weaving language together and leaving text, focusing on words that would bring about this idea of peace and compassion. And so rather than just focusing on the single word kindness, she expanded it to include eight different words, which included compassion, kindness, respect, understanding, patience, tolerance, gentleness, and forgiveness. And she felt that these eight words were core to the idea of inspiring peace in others. And in order to make this work accessible to as many people as possible and familiar to as many people as possible, she translated these eight words into 35 world languages and started to weave them together in her rice paper patterns. And so part of the idea with, of this was to provide moments of recognition, moments of familiarity to anyone who would be looking at these pieces regardless of their their maternal language or the languages that they know regardless of where this work is being shown it's something that can be universally understood by most of the world's peoples and she also wanted it to be something that was comforting welcoming and familiar sort of creating a space where one could think about these ideas of peace and sort of see the pieces uh, that would possibly bring about peace in these eight words woven together in this beautiful pattern and so Amy has continued this idea of weaving. Um, she started making these woven text images quite a long time ago, but it's a practice she continue on, continues on for today. One other little element I'd like you to notice with this piece is the idea of simplicity. And so I'll bring, on, bring this up a little bit later on, um, but in this piece you'll recognize the simplicity of the shapes. The weaving and the text are quite dense and they're quite busy. And so everything else is very familiar and simple, playing with simple squares, circles, and simple primary colors. And so as this idea of weaving and text began to grow, the peace project began to solidify. And so this was one of the first iterations of the peace project. And it was done in 2001. And to give you a sense of scale for this work, each panel is four feet wide by eight feet tall. And so you can just imagine the scale of this piece and all of this text and these eight words being woven together into this beautiful installation. And so this is something that would hang along the wall of a gallery, something you could walk backwards and forwards, either reading the text or just being taken in by the monumental amount of work or the really delicate and simple aesthetics of the piece. It's very calming and tranquil and something that Lowen would hope to inspire a sense of contemplation in the viewer, bringing you to a sense of contemplating peace in the world. And she quickly started to add in these interactive elements. And this is just one example of many uh, from a possible Canada, which was exhibited at the Works Festival in Edmonton in 2017. Um, and you can see those familiar post-it notes are starting to crop up. And so while she was creating this woven piece that was reminiscent of the Canadian flag, on the side she wanted people to leave their own intentions, their own dreams for a possible better Canada, a future Canada. And so as 
low and we can see that she's quite familiar and comfortable with these two dimensional standing works but she wanted to create something that was a little bit more immersive something that people could walk around and really feel immersed into and this is when she started to create more installation style artworks and that included lantern as one of the first and so this piece is also very large it's 10 feet tall by 10 feet in diameter and again has those woven rice paper panels but the inside of the lantern glows through the gaps creating this wonderful gentle golden glow that immerses the viewers and so Loan talks about really enjoying working in installation not only because it can create a really powerful emotional bond with the viewer seeing something in the round being able to experience it from multiple sides but she likes sort of having something that can be all-encompassing sort of really take in the viewers field of view uh, and sort of provide this whole immersive experience of physically emotionally and physically being able to interact with the artwork and so this brings us to the next step in the project. And so Lantern was the installation that existed before House Illuminates Peace. And so one thing I did want to mention is that Amy Lowen felt um, was recognized quite quickly after finishing her master's degree with several different exhibitions and installations. But her peace project was recognized um, in early on in her career um, by winning an award that was put out by the national uh, by the federal government to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the national or of the De De Declaration of Human Rights. And so this federal competition went out to uh, look for artworks that could sort of commemorate, honor, and celebrate the Declaration of Human Rights. And Amy Lowen's work was chosen and exhibited at the National Gallery in Canada as part of that competition. And her peace project has been recognized around the world. It's been exhibited across Canada and the United States and Asia. In 2010, the entire project was designated as Canadian cultural property. Uh, and in 2015, Amy Lowen was actually inducted into the Can Royal Canadian Academy for the Arts. And so this exhibition and this project of hers not only touches people on a human level, but has been really wonderfully received um, both within the arts community and across the world. And so this brings us to House Inspiring Peace, which was first created in 2015. And so this is a monumental structure. It's created from woven rice paper panels, um, these cut panels in the front that are made from silk and rice paper. The roof is made from Western cotton canvas and the structure itself is made from Canadian maple. You're probably starting to get the impression that each element of the house is quite symbolic and holds a lot of meaning for Lowen and you would be dead right at this point. And so to start us off, I'd like to talk a little bit about the structure itself. And so it's quite large scale and it's designed to be interactive. So you're able to walk around the house to see all of the details on the exterior, but also to enter the house and sort of have it be treated almost like a metaphor for your own home, a place of retreat and a place of comfort. Uh, the panels on the front are these cut silk panels. And so how it's created is there's a couple of layers of paper which have had silk, this beautiful silk brocade added to the outside and then that's cut by hand to create these windows and this is several uh, several ideas uh, put behind it to sort of express in that house part of it is to bring in an iconic peace sign and so you'll notice that the house the symbols themselves are made by overlapping and rotating that classic 1970s peace sign to create these more complicated um, tile patterns but also to cast shadows on the inside of the house. So you'll notice on the back of this image, there are these beautiful shadows being cast by the window gables on the side. And so the walls themselves are made from woven rice paper. And so against that same practice, she's been working it for several, several years now. And you'll also notice that another classic peace sign has been incorporated into the outside of the house. And that is the overlapping image of the dove, that classic universal dove as the symbol for peace. And so Lowen is creating more complex patterns by overlapping and using very simple symbols. So in exactly the same way that she creates these wonderful tile patterns using the classic peace sign, just by overlapping and layering it. Same too with the doves, creating something beautiful and more complex, but has a very simple kernel at the, at the, at the core of the work. And so coming back to that idea of simplicity, this is the first piece, uh, the first maquette that was made up um, to sort of inspire the designs of the house. So one of your questions is how do you go from having an idea of wanting to create a house to actually creating this giant structure inside the gallery? And the answer is you start simple, you start small. And so the first maquette was made was this one here and it's made out of simple paper, four walls, a roof and a door. 
start off the project, Amy Lowen started to work very closely with her husband on how to build the structure itself. And so she had ideas of wanting the walls to be made out of these woven rice paper panels and the structure itself to be made out of Canadian maple. And so they started to work together to finalize a design for the house and the structure itself on how it could be taken apart and reassembled. One of the biggest challenges anyone working in installation art knows is not only building the structure itself, but it has to be transportable, it has to be storable. So you want to care very carefully craft the design um, so that it can easily come apart, be put back together again, so it can be brought to several different galleries. And I must say, House Inspiring Piece is brilliantly well designed. It went together, despite being a monumental task to take over, it went together beautifully in the gallery space. And so once they sort of built this smaller iteration of the house to sort, uh, sort out exactly how to build it, what parts we're going to need, um, they started to construct the actual house themselves. And so working with, um, one of the things Amy talked about when chatting about this piece is recognizing that art doesn't happen in a vacuum and larger projects like this need more than just the artist to exist. And so she helped design to create the work. She worked closely with her husband to build the structure and several of their friends and family members also provided insights, critique, um, or patterns and designs for building the house and making it easier to assemble and disassemble. So a friend of theirs was able to provide these really beautiful three-dimensional drawings and illustrations to help with the design and the building of the project after it's complete. So when the house comes to the gallery itself, you might ask how we build it. You can't just transport a house as is. And so this piece of this artwork is brilliantly well organized. And so you literally start from the ground up. You start by building that beautiful Canadian maple frame along the floor and everything's organized and color coded so you know exactly which pieces are supposed to go where. Once the frame is built, the window gables go on next, and so you can see that Amy and I are installing them on the right, and they are attached to the top of the wooden frame and sort of laid in so that any adhesives that we're using, the structures that it used to add, secure them there, are hidden by the canvas shingles and by the walls later on. And so you can see that it takes quite a while to build the house. Once the structure is built, we add in the electrical and start adding in the roof. And the last element to go on is actually the walls. They're hung with the little L brackets on the side and so it actually makes them quite simple to add in right at the very end once most of the ladders and the tools have been put away. And so they come rolled up and they overlap one another so they sit really gently and beautiful along the outside of the house um, as that final element that comes in. And so I wanted you to take a little bit of a closer look at the weaving pattern itself. And so you'll notice that it's meant to mimic bricks. So we've got wider horizontal bands interspersed with those skinny vertical bands that mimic masonry or traditional brick laying. In this image, you can also see that Amy is using uh, different cutouts. So these, she has these uh, plastic cutout sheets of the doves that she's designed, but that allows her a lot of flexibility in how she's going to layer the images one across the other. So some of the doves are using negative space, so they are not colored in at all. It's just an echo, like a, a white silhouette of the rice paper with shading around the outside where other doves are completely shaded in with charcoal or they're just simple outlines. And so using these overlapping cutouts allows Amy a lot of space to plan and very carefully articulate how she wants to design the panels so that they look really stunning and beautiful all the way across. And the last step that goes in is actually text. And so this comes back to those circular pieces we were looking at at the beginning that had those eight words in 35 world languages. You'll notice that this time, the text is not completely provided by Amy. And so as uh, we saw in this exhibition, there's that collaborative community element. That's something that Amy has been using in most of her installations for a very long time. And so in a previous piece project, not in House Illuminates piece, she was asking people to write their intentions to create a more peaceful world on little strips of paper that could then be used for weaving. And so she has thousands and thousands of these little pieces, woven pieces, very skinny pieces of strips that have inspirations and aspirations for peace added by people from all across the world, all ages, all different languages. Some of them you can see are fairly simple drawings. Some of them are tools for using peace and some of them are just fairly simple aspirations and iterations of peace. 
And one of the things that I really enjoy about Amy's practice is that sort of cyclical nature of having a project and a collaboration with the public and having that feed into future projects themselves. And so this beautiful structure of House Inspiring Peace wouldn't have been possible without the participation of people from the past. And so that gives you a bit of an insight into how the structure was made and how it was built. And so once we actually travel into the inside of the house, um, this is a close up of those panels and you can get a little bit of another detail of that silk brocade, sort of that luscious texture that's there. Um, and you can see again, those overlapping symbols for peace of the doves and the classic peace sign. Uh, but once we go into the house, um, we kind of are hearkened back to that quote from Lao Tzu that I read at the beginning of the tour that has actually been written in um, using inkbrush and calligraphy all along the inside of the wall. And so at this point, Amy is using those very traditional tools of uh, calligraphy brushes and traditional uh, Chinese ink to write this text on the inside of the wall. And she's, she wants it to be something that's almost like a surprise when you enter into the structure itself. And so it starts on one side if there's to be peace in the world and continues all along the inside of the house to finishing on the other side by the door, there must be peace in the heart. And so these were all very carefully planned out ahead of time, as is everything that Amy Lon has done for this house project. Um, but she decided that she wanted to write the text in English, but using that Chinese calligraphy as sort of hearkening back to that blending of East and West within her artistic practice. Uh, English is a very common language. It's something that would be recognizable to a lot of people. And so when she had to make the choice of just choosing one language for this text, she decided on English, but wanted to bring in those multiple cultures and sort of that familiarity of using more Eastern traditions in the brushwork and in her brush strokes. And the last element inside the house that I want to touch on, you can just see a sort of the center left of your screen right now, and that's the lights that are inside the house. And you can see it's an Edison light, which has now kind of come back into fashion. They're a little bit antique kind of in vogue right now. But Amy very intentionally wanted to use Edison style light bulbs as sort of a reminder back to that very first light bulb. Sort of that first bulb that was designed successfully to bring illumination and electric lights into everyone's household. And so for Amy, these light bulbs not only physically light the inside of the house, but they bring that sense of illum metaphorical illumination and possibility, a sense of new beginning to the house itself, creating this wonderful, calming and warm environment inside the structure. And so we're gonna take a little bit of a break from talking about the house and go on to look at the watercolor pieces that adorn uh, the west wall of the gallery. And that is Amy's contemplation series. You might start to recognize some of the very similar things that Loan is using in her watercolors that she uses in the structure. And that is the idea of simplicity. And in this case, simple geometric shapes. And so these watercolor paintings are created using a technique called glazing. And so that's layering trans semi-translucent layers of uh, vibrant pigments and watercolor in thin washes over top of one another. And so some of these pieces might have, have, have up to 10 layers of watercolor on each of the works. And you'll notice that Loan is also sticking to very simplistic colors. So your primary and secondary colors of blue, red, and yellow, and then those secondary colors of green, purple, and orange. And so she wants to use this idea of simplicity you'll notice that's come up again, um, as a way of making it familiar to everyone. But she also talks about there being a very strong layer of elegance and beauty and simplicity. And so these pieces are designed to bring us to a place of stillness. And so Loan says that beauty and having something luscious and colorful to look at draws our intention and helps to hold it there. But to really get the viewer to a place of stillness, I want you to notice the circles that are in every one of these pieces. And so each of the circles has variations to it. And so they vary in color, the line varies in width. And that's something that adds, um, that actually helps to keep your eye moving very calmly throughout the work. You tend, your eye 
tends to follow that line of the circle very calmly and quietly sort of looking and taking in all of the details without you really noticing that that's what it's doing and so again it comes back to that idea of this artwork being a bit of a two-way street you're noticing the work but it is having an impact on you whether you're quite aware of it or not and so Loan really likes the idea of having that recognition of simple forms squares triangles and circles as well as the viewers sort of looking at that wonderful elegance and that beauty in the line and the gentle gradations of color as a way of bringing your own mind to a place of inner stillness. And so Loan talks about getting to that place of stillness is a really wonderful thing for the mind. It allows for inspiration, allows for problem solving, but it also allows you to access those feelings of peace and um, contemplation, getting you to a place where you can sort of ponder possibly those eight words or ponder your own, uh, start to foster your own sense of peace within your own heart. And so you can see here in Lowen's studio that she lays out and works on several of these watercolor pieces at one time. And she tapes her watercolor paper right to a board to keep it from uh, getting distorted while she's working. But she works very carefully with lots of different colors. You can see on her table she's got sort of these orangey reds, these luscious yellows, and the sort of this dark teal of layering color on the outside of that circle very, uh, very intentionally to provide just enough variation for your eye to keep moving as you're looking at the work. And you can also see that parts of the house are actually built in her studio at this time um, and giving you a sense of the scale and uh, how the process was working at the time. And so I wanted to bring your attention to the last painting in the exhibition, which is called Dawning. It's quite a bit larger than the contemplations that are along the wall. And this one is actually done from quite a bit earlier in Amy's practice. It's from 1998. And so this actually gives you a little bit of a glimpse into the beginning of this contemplation series. So again, we have that simple gradation of color, simple form of just the single circle in the middle. Um, but this work was actually done um, at a much earlier point. And so you can see that it's much smoother and gradation of watercolor and it was designed to be almost at a human scale and so you can see the photographer reflected in the glass and that's quite intentional you can always kind of see yourself in the center of a calm blue field in the center of this circle and sort of again coming to that place of contemplation and stillness and so as you've been waiting patiently, looking through the house, looking through the paintings, we'll come to that last sort of artistic element in the exhibition, which is the installation along the windows. This is the newest piece in the exhibition, and I do apologize, I don't have great photos of it. It's quite difficult to photograph. Um, but it takes up one full window channel in our north facing windows. And when we were starting to plan for this exhibition, the gallery's cur previous curator and director, Jenny Wilson, had actually asked Amy Lone if she'd be interested in creating a new element for this exhibition. A lot of these pieces have been exhibited before and we're delighted to bring them to the gallery. Uh, we were curious if there's something that Amy would want to take on or possibly pursue as sort of a new element to add and enhance this project. And when she came to visit the gallery for the first time, she was very taken with the design of our exhibition space. Many of you may know that the gallery underwent a major renovation reopening in 2019, and the gallery, the new exhibition space was designed to be a lantern gallery, which means it's visible from the outside. There's this large bay of windows that provides not only natural light, but a little glimpse inside to anyone living or anyone passing by on the street. And Amy was very taken with this idea of bridging the outside world and the gallery world and wanted to create something that would engage with this window space, sort of this transitional space, allowing people to see an artwork and take something in whether they came into the gallery or not. And so she went back to that design, that layered pattern that you can see on the house of the overlapping piece signs and created a new layout and a new pattern that she could use that would fit into one window channel. Um, she said she only wanted to tackle one channel because um, at the time she wasn't exactly sure what to do and the show was coming up quite quickly. And so you can see it's very symmetrical. The, the circular elements are beautifully symmetrical, um, sort of with these larger and smaller portions taking up the entire channel right from the floor to the ceiling. And then interspersed throughout the channel are these little six pointed stars. Again, they have their own beautiful symmetry to them, but in the installation in the window, they aren't symmetrical. So they kind of create this visual interest that keeps your eye working and looking throughout the piece because there are these moments of uh, dissymmetry or unsymmetry interspersed with symmetry themselves. 
To create this work, Amy actually laid out an area in her studio that was the exact dimensions and scale of the window itself and started to work with layering these images and kind of creating the pattern. And so I've got a little bit of a video footage here to show you so that it gives you a really good sense of what the exact details of the pattern are. Of course, her studio doesn't have 14 foot ceilings and so she had to create it on the horizontal. And one of the puzzles she wanted to work out exactly was how to install this, this installation into the window itself. She had thought about creating paper cutouts and attaching them to the window somehow, or possibly creating works using chloroplast or foam core and just cutting it out by hand as she had with the window gables. Um, but a friend of hers actually suggested using cut vinyl. And so that's the same material, kind of this plastic sticker material that we use in our exhibitions for the titles of every one of our shows. You, I guarantee you've seen vinyl before, even if you haven't recognized that's exactly what it is. And so the idea was to attach these vinyl stickers directly to the window themselves. And this was a really wonderful solution because not only would it save Amy's hands from having to cut out um, this pattern, this really detailed, meticulous pattern that's using an X-Acto knife, um, but it would also allow us to create something that stuck directly to the window, creating the best possible transition from it being visible from the outside. The downside of the cut vinyl or is that it's not reusable. And so once it's been printed and scaled for a specific space, like our window, uh, and attached, taking it down again, um, you can't save the vinyl. So it's something that will only exist in this precise iteration in our gallery, which is quite beautiful, if a little ephemeral at the same time. And so if Amy's ever to take up this project, The Stars Are Shining in another gallery, it would never look exactly the same. And that's one of the best things about site-specific artwork, is engaging in a specific place at a specific moment to create something special and beautiful. And so this window installation has something that's added a lot of vibrancy and interest to the exhibition, but also a really sort of bittersweet special element that will never be seen quite the same way again. That brings us back to the last element in the exhibition, which is the collaborative project. And so in the same way that past collaborative projects have fed into the house inspiring piece, I always wonder exactly what Amy will end up doing with these post-it notes because she does collect and save them after the exhibition. But the beautiful thing about this collaborative installation is not only the idea of possibly creating material for future artwork, but creating a site to amplify wishes for peace. And so she writes directly on the wall, what will you do to make this world a better place? And as the exhibition goes on, the post-it notes grow and grow. There's more um, aspirations, there's more ideals, there's more contribution to this world, to this collaborative piece, which means there's more and more people in the community thinking about this project of inspiring peace in their own hearts and in their own communities. And so Lowen likes to include these collaborative elements as a way of inspiring peace in a neighborhood and amplifying this desire, this collective aspiration for a more peaceful world in any community that the exhibition visits. And so if you're interested in taking part and at too far of a distance, feel free to type your own aspirations for peace or your own inspirations for making this world a better place into the comments and I would be happy to add them to the exhibition while it is still here. And so that brings us to the end of our virtual tour. And I did want to leave on um, a little note that provides a little bit of a new context for the exhibition. And so when Amy Lone was giving an artist talk at the gallery, she talked about a new interpretation that's arisen for house inspiring piece in particular since the beginning and the onset of the pandemic. And she says with all the focus being added to staying in our homes and sort of having separation and having isolation, she says she sees this house in a bit of a new way and having a bit of a new life. And so with this possibility, this time of staying within our house, she sees the house inspiring peace, almost like a chrysalis. And so taking this opportunity of time and separation that we've been gifted um, as a time to contemplate how we can reemerge into the world in a better place and sort of bring more of these ideals of peace and connection and um, compassion for not only ourselves, but for all others. And so she sees the house project not only as inspiring and embodying these ideals, 
but sort of mirroring this in-between time that we happen to exist in now, sort of harnessing this opportunity that we've been given um, in and amongst a lot of the challenges that have happened, but using it as an opportunity to provide more peace and more connection in the world and sort of re-emerge from this time of trial um, in a more peaceful and with better intentions of bringing this peace to the wider community. So thank you so much for joining us for this today's virtual tour. I hope you've enjoyed yourself. You're welcome to visit our website if you're interested in taking in any of these virtual tours for any of our other exhibitions. And definitely stay tuned to our social media and website pages for opportunities to engage with all of our exhibitions. Hope you have a wonderful day and we'll see you again soon.